Alright guys, we are back with some more F1 2011 career mode. It's been a little while since I've actually recorded this because normally when I come back to this game, I normally do recordings in a bunch of episodes in a row in one session. So, um, I'm starting the next run of episodes. So, we're essentially sort of starting from scratch again. I've got to build up my pace again, my consistency. And you'll see over the next two to three races that my consistency, my race pace and everything will improve gradually. So, I don't even know what track we're at today. It is the German Grand Prix in Nürburgring. Finally, finally got that out there. So, we're at the Nürburgring. Personally, it's been a very long time since I've driven this track because it is no longer a regular appearance on the F1 calendar, which is a bit of a shame. We're running some performance tests this session. Try and beat the target time. No, not doing it. Fitted an upgrade package to your car. You should see a massive difference in grip. Thank you very much. I didn't even have to do the R and D to get it. Lads, lads, lads! I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Why am I doing this in a serious career mode? Never mind. Never mind. The car sustains no damage whatsoever. Nice damage model. It's funny how I jump on this game. I, I instantly feel like I'm at home a little bit. Um, it's much more natural to me than what F1 2014 was. And after not playing either of 2011 or 2014 for a while, I actually thought that this game was my least favorite. But after coming back to it, after playing the F1 2014 game the other day for a video, I've realized that F1 2014 is probably my least favorite game by Codemasters. This game may have some ridiculously handling cars. And the AI may not be that great, but at least it feels a little bit rewarding when you get it right. Whereas F1 2014, it just never feels like you're able to push. But in this game, at least you can push, and you're sort of rewarded by doing that. Purple to do 1.2 seconds up on our last lap. To be fair though, it was our very first lap on the game in uh, three or four weeks. But uh, that's... That is worse than the Canadian bunny hop. Oh, get off, Narnia. The wardrobe is freaking not even that far out. Sometimes you can go through that corner. I think back in the day, maybe with the DRS open, if you got the absolute perfect line and you had a setup geared towards understeer, I think it might have just been possible. Um, going up our rouge with the DRS fully open was something that was really hard to master, but when you got it right, it was so rewarding. Final chicane now, nice bunny hop once again. That was something you had to watch in league racing. Final corner, down to second gear, on the power early, open the DRS on the exit, use a bit of curbing on the exit, and we go pole by 1.2 seconds. 1.2 seconds. Wow. I don't like your attitude, Andy. Andy Knight. He's got a bit complacent. He doesn't even get excited about pole positions anymore. Bring back my engineer from 2010. At least he had a bit of emotion. But we have pole position for the German Grand Prix. We have Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button in third place. Fernando Alonso, P4. Mark Webber, championship leader. Not a good showing from him down in P7. You'd think that this would be a really good track for the Red Bulls. Obviously not. Sebastian Vettel down in P5 as well. If we... Finish on the top step of the podium, we can make some solid inroads into the leaders for this Drivers' Championship. It's time for the German Grand Prix. Let's go to the race. So here we are for the race, guys. Um, qualifying. I can't believe how almost comfortable that was. I was able to jump straight back on the game and drive an awesome lap. It looked like I was actually regularly driving F1 2011 again. I was quite shocked, but here we are on the grid for the German Grand Prix, getting ready for the start of this race here. Hopefully we can have a good start. Away we go. Floor the power on exit. Use a bit of curves. And away we go. Looks like we have the lead for now. Hamilton on the inside, leaving a bit of space. Someone will inevitably take out the uh, first corner bollard on the apex there. Now, I don't know if it was this game or maybe it was 2013, but if that bollard was a little bit displaced, like it was standing up crooked, and you put a wheel over that bollard, race over. <laughs> I 
I'm so Sound dumb. Heavy. Are you okay? This happened many times when you crossed over those bollards. It was so annoying. We're not even through lap one yet, and the gap looks like it's over a second. 1.3 seconds to Lewis. No, not Lewis Hamilton. He's not even in the top three anymore. Mark Webber recovers to third place. So he's moved up four positions on this first lap already. We're already doing a Sebastian Vettel of this race. Trying to get that lead as big as we can so that we have a bit of comfort heading into the first round of pit stops. It's looking good so far. Even though we went purple, cars behind me are still... They, they've reeled me in by a tenth after the first lap. There we go. Button set to 130.366. So the AI have pace today. Me and Jensen literally trading purple sectors every, every lap. Purple again. This time we're seven tenths up. Surely Jensen... No, he's got no match for us. I think maybe Webber's on the attack there, holding him up a little bit. The gap is 2.4 seconds. We've made up a second in this lap alone. And I don't really feel I did anything too different to the previous lap. Maybe you got on the power a little bit earlier, three corners, and that's made up nine tenths. Logic. Whoa. Okay, I was exploring the limits uh, a little too much, getting a little bit too confident. The pits are clear. Now's a good time to pit. Now I'm going to stay out one more lap, pit on lap five, like we were suggested, and take. Prime seven laps to the end. I know our tires look pretty worn and they feel pretty bad at the moment But it's gonna do us a lot better in the long run if we stay out this extra lap the pit window is open. Come in this lap. Down into lean through the final chicane nice and gingerly don't touch the curving Don't want to get the car airborne on these worn tires. I don't have the grip to maintain the traction to keep it straight don't hit the pit wall on the entry and into the pit. So it's a little bit stressful when you have pit lanes that have a barrier right next, right on the outside of where you're supposed to be going. Singapore is another bad one for almost destroying yourself as you come into the pits. But now we're in. Hopefully it's a good stop from the Williams boys. 4.7 seconds. I don't know if that's as, I don't know if that's a good stop on F1 2011 or not. But we'll carry on. We're going to rejoin behind that Force India, I think. We may have the inside line, and we may... No, we won't. Understeer on exit, and Duresta gets us. So we are in a bit of traffic. These guys around us, of course, have not stopped yet. They're still on their option tyres, so... Once our tyres, our prime tyres, get up the temperature a bit, they're going to be significantly faster than these midfield runners. Oh! There's never really that threat of losing the back end, or potentially wiping out your car in F1 2015 when the tyres are worn, or when they're cold. But on this game, entirely different story. That's Alga Suari we're going wheel to wheel with. Because I can't get the grips of this car at the moment on cold tyres. And we jump all of the leaders around us. So, we will assume the race lead once again, once Teresta comes in. Thank you, Engineer. I can see him right in front of me. Now might be the time. I'll put it up in the fast. We'll see what happens. I was in lean then. That's, that's probably why I was a bit slow and why Algaswari was uh, close to passing me. Up the inside of the rest of now into this left-hander where Michael Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel lose the back end a lot when they put this their right rear tyre into the grass. Thank you, Engineer. Duresta gets DRS on this little back straight here. Wheel to wheel. We did make contact then, but we hang on to first place. Duresta finally makes his stop and Jensen Button is still right where he was before. He's about 1.2 back, is he? 1.3 seconds. Oh, <laughs> that's a catch. Oh no, that's a Sergio Perez if I've ever seen one. I don't know if people get that reference anymore, but uh, for those wondering, it's the uh, Sergio Perez of Malaysia 2012, how he was chasing down Fernando Alonso. He was probably gonna win the race, he locks up at the penultimate corner, and he never got the opportunity to uh, win that race. That's, that's that's why I say a Sergio Perez, when I completely lock up and screw up an entire corner. Oh yeah, by the way, there was a 16% chance of rain, and I think that those little dots of rain are now, be now, now finally coming at the end of the race. I don't think it's going to have any impact at all on this race, though. It just may make the track conditions a little less optimal than usual. 
Oh, whoa, 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 Jensen! Where did that come from? Ah, oh, okay. Alright, so Jensen Button has overtaken us on the penultimate lap of this race. I was talking about the weather, and Jensen Button comes out of nowhere, takes the lead of the German Grand Prix. We're gonna, it's the last lap! Oh, okay, no, this is serious. Honestly, guys, where has this come from? All race, Jensen was hovering at 1.2 seconds, 1.3 seconds. He's all of a sudden come out of nowhere. Maybe he's come out of FuelCon, and he's finally decided to pull his finger out and, and actually race now. And he's absolutely sniped the race lead here from us. We were pretty comfortable, not gonna lie. So, I don't know where this has come from. We really need to push now. Get within that one second DRS window again. We may just be on the brink. The rain is now coming down, as I saw through that corner. And if we can just get close enough, the slipstream is pretty OP. That may just be enough for us to get the lead back of the German Grand Prix. Unbelievable scenes, quoting it's Matty G and Noble2909. Don't know who came up with that phrase, but it was way overused in the Italian Grand Prix for YouTuber Championship. DRS is open. I've upshifted into seventh gear a little too early. That may cost me. Jensen goes defensive. That may be the mistake that costs him this race. It has. We move into the lead in the penultimate corner. One more corner to go. And it looks like we may hang on to this one, lads. That was a lucky, lucky escape for the German Grand Prix. Across the line, we're going to take our second race win in a row for this F1 2011 championship. Brilliant, that's the double, pole and the win. So there we go guys, that has been the German Grand Prix for F1 2011 career mode. It's never quite over until it's over, I sort of eased off in the last two to three laps. And Jensen seemingly probably turned up the wick a little bit and um, caught me by surprise. They got the lead back but we managed to um, use a bit more of the engine ourselves as well because we did save a little bit of fuel in the mid part of that race. And we got back in front of him, Jensen making a weird defensive uh, decision there. He didn't really need to and um, I think it may have ended up costing him because he broke a little bit early coming into that penultimate chicane. But either way, we've earned the lead. We earned that race win once again and um, yeah, it's it's done us a world of good in the driver's standing. Sebastian Vettel moving back after starting in P5. My teammate Rumens, R Rumens? Rubens Barrichello, 14th place. It's pretty typical of a career mode where my teammate just is nowhere. Every single career mode. Lewis Hamilton not finishing in the points. Very interesting right there. And Michael Schumacher DNFing in that race. So too with Kamui Kobayashi. Let's have a look at the driver's standings. Fantastic result. Two in a row. Unbelievable. Unbelievable scenes. You're a bit late to the party engineer, but I'll take it. Thank you very much. We're still in third place in the driver's standings. Or oh, we've overtaken Jensen. I'm not too sure. No, I think we're already in front of him because we only gained seven points over him in this race. So we're 60 points behind Mark Webber at the moment. Fernando Alonso looking fairly solid there in second place. We're 20 points behind him. So we need a few more race wins, that's for sure. And um, if we can string together a few more, then who knows, anything's possible. We do need to hope that Mark Webber has a few unfavorable things happen to him, to be honest, if we want to have any chance of winning this championship. But I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep pushing no matter what. But, um, yep, that's been this race for today. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And um, I'll see you guys for the next race on F1 2011 Career Mode. Not too sure when it'll be, but um, I'm really uh, motivated to get this series done and dusted now. I'm really enjoying 2011 Career Mode, and I hope you guys are too. So that's lots of rambling done in this video. Until my next one, guys, I'll see you next time. Why, hello there, sir. Why have you graced me with your presence today? As we all know, points mean prizes. Those 25 points take you closer to the ultimate prize. The formula we'll need a lot of luck to take the title, not gonna lie. Now, we may only be at the midpoint of the season, but the championship battle's already hotting up. You already asked this question. You already asked this question. Yeah, I'm going to keep staring at you until you realize how much of a mm, you are.